Good morning, good morning, good morning. I don't know about any of you, but I am so excited this morning. I actually got up early because I haven't been on camera in so long. God has been um, bringing me through some things, but he has kept me. And so this morning, I am so excited. I'm excited. We're excited that Pastor and First Lady made it safely on their vacation slash work um, trip that they just took to Vegas. So we're glad to have them back. And we thank God for keeping them safe during the time that they were away from us. So we thank you so much, God, for keeping them, for giving them the rest they need, for allowing First Lady to just relax, enjoy her trip, do a little retail therapy. And she did all of those things. So for that, we are thankful. Now, today is April 14th. 2024, the day before tax day. So those of you who have not gotten your taxes done, today is the day that you need to do it. Remember the Bible said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar and to God that's which is God. So some of us owe some money, so you might as well fork it up and get that going. We sincerely welcome you, each of you, wherever you're worshiping, whether you are at Bedside Baptist, whether you're on your way to somewhere, wherever you're listening to this broadcast, we want to thank you. We have a unique opportunity here at Elevating Faith that we are the church on the go and we are helping your faith to grow. So for that, thank you for being a part of our worship experience on this morning. Now, we also want to acknowledge our other leaders, elders Carl and Jackie Scott. We love them so much. And we thank you. And today we have a very special treat. We have Elder Carl. He is going to be bringing a word. So get your, your yourself saddled in because he is coming in hot this morning. He is full of the word. God is truly, truly doing some work in, in Elder Carl. So we thank you and we are blessed to have him this morning. Now, one more thing that I want to lift up before I get into our call to worship is we have a devotional book that we all so first later someone if you can if you have a picture of our book if not i'll just go ahead and just describe what it is um but god blessed us here as a ministry to publish a book and it's called lift lift is also a mantra it's a prayer mantra lord increase faith today it's a 125 day devotional, prayer devotional. Now you, you may say, what do I need with a prayer devotional? Let me give you several reasons why you need a prayer devotional. Many times we are dealing with people, maybe people on our job or in our families, maybe they have lost a loved one, maybe they're going through grief, maybe they're going through depression, and you don't quite know how to minister to them. This book, Lift, has 125 anointed prayers and devotionals. So you don't have to do it. We've done it for you. This is an anointed book. God has blessed each of us. And we worked on this book. Here it is right here. It's a picture of it. Lift. It's a mantra. It's a prayer. It's an affirmation. Lord, increase faith today. So that's what the person will be asking. You don't have to think of words. You may not be a pastor or even you, for your prayer team at church. If you know a church that has a prayer team and they don't have a book to go by, this is the perfect book. So we're offering this book not only to individuals, but to churches. And where this book will benefit you in many ways. It, it helps you if you're trying to witness to someone or be a blessing to someone you don't quite have the words, use this book. If someone is um, going through grief and they don't know how to deal with it, they need something to help guide them along daily, give them this book. If there's a person that may be having marital issues and you don't know quite what to say to them, this is the perfect gift. Even for yourself, you want a closer walk with Jesus. This is the book that you want to use. Lift, Lord, increase faith today. Thank you, First Lady, for adding that um, to um, our list this morning. 
Now, we want to get into our call to worship. So if, First Lady, if you could play softly some music, because I really want to draw people into what we're really doing when we say call to worship. What we're really doing is inviting you into the throne room of God. That is where you go and you get your problems solved. That is where you go and you get the presence of a mighty God. This morning here at Elevating Faith, we want to pause for a moment just to invite you in to our call to worship. Come, let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us lift up our voices in praise and adoration to the one and only true King. To the Lord of Lord and the King of King, let us worship Him. Let us open our hearts to receive His presence and His anointing upon us. So this morning when you come and you're just not coming just to hear Angela's voice, you're coming because we want to be immersed, embraced by the glory of God. Our scripture tells us in Isaiah 44, 3, for I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. Doesn't that sound refreshing on this morning? Oh God, some of us are so dry, we are parched, God, because we've been walking through a dry in a desolate land. God, we ask that you pour your spirit out upon your people on this morning. God, that you bless each and every one of us, that you pour your spirit out upon our leadership team, that you would pour your spirit out upon the members, that you would pour your spirit out upon those who are listening this morning, God. God, we know that when we, we're in your presence, God, we know that there is fullness of joy. So on this morning, God, we ask that you would allow the cloud of your glory to just descend upon your people. Today, we gather together at this time of worship to experience a time of refresh, refreshing and a flow of your Holy Spirit, O oh God. As we come before you, O oh God, we open our hearts and our minds. Let us expect your anointing to rain down on us, to shower down on each one of us, to drench us, God, with your glory. Don't allow us to leave from this service on this day, the same way that we came. So Heavenly Father, we come before you today with an expectant heart, ready to receive your anointing and your refreshing. Oh God, pour out your spirit upon us on this day. Oh Lord, and fill us, fill us God, through the teaching and the preaching word of God through elder cause God. Pour out your power and your presence. Oh God, may your anointing rain down on us so powerfully today that we are renewed and we are empowered to go out into a dark and a desolate world and be a witness for the kingdom. Lord Jesus, we ask this prayer in the name of of Jesus the Christ. Let us worship today. Amen. Amen. Come on, stay right there. Just stay right there in that spirit. Stay with you. Stay right there. Just keep it right there in that spirit of yes, worship. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, we just Glory, want to continue to Glory, love Hallelujah. Just... Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Yes, come on. Come on, worship him. Where Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Just Hallelujah. Just begin to worship him. Come on, come on. 
Just begin to worship Him. Just begin to worship Him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship Him right now because that tomb is empty. We worship Him. We worship Him. We worship Him because in Him was the fullness and the manifestation of for God so loved the world that He gave. That He gave. That he gave. He gave not something trivial nor insignificant. Yes, God. He gave us his very best. He he gave us his only begotten son. And here's what here's and here's the good news for you today: that whosoever believes yes. in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. I thank God today and I worship him this morning because I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever? <laughs> You are whosoever. You are whosoever. If you woke up drawing breath in your lungs this morning, you are whosoever. If you walking and talking and living and breathing this morning, you ma'am, you sir are a whosoever. If you love him, you are a whosoever. Even if you don't know him, you still are a whosoever because he gave him for all the whosoevers. So we worship him today. We come to worship him now in our giving because we are some whosoever's. Every whosoever, whoever you are, then you then you ought to become ready to give now. Giving is every bit of a part of worship as everything else. Giving is a vital part of worship. So because we are some a bunch of whosoever's, these whosoever's who God gave his son for, come now to worship God in our giving. There are three ways that we have to give here at Elevating Faith. You can give via our cash app at dollar sign Elevating Faith Men. You can give by just pointing your camera and scanning the QR code in the middle. And finally, you can also text to give. But mostly, I want you to give. The, 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 the how is less important than the why. God loves a cheerful giver. I want you to understand that we stand on Luke 6 and 38, which says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. We come to give God's way, cheerfully, not out of compulsion. We don't force you to give here, Ele Elevating Faith Ministries. We ask you and we challenge you to give the way God has given to you. Simply give God's way. When you give God's way, then you won't think it robbery to bring your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in his house. When you give God's way, you can't just sit by and see somebody in need and not meet that need. When you give God's way, you will not, you will not sacrifice, like David said, I will not sacrifice unto my God that which costs me nothing. So we just encourage you to give God's way. Giving God's way don't mean that I got to have a whole bunch so I can figure out what I'm going to give. Giving God's way don't mean that you're tipping God. Giving God's way don't mean that I got to make sure I got this taken care of, that taken care of, that taken care of, this taken care of. I got annuities. I got stocks. I got bonds. I got a retirement home. Oh, now I can start giving to God. That's not what giving God's way is all about. Giving God's way is thinking about God first. Bringing God back the first fruits that he's giving you. That's giving God's way. Giving God's way is meeting the needs of people who are in need. So we challenge you today. We encourage you to come now and give God's way. Give God's way. So I want you to get your best gift in your hand. I want you to get the best, your, your best gift in your hand. And let's come giving God's way. Come on. Get your gift in your hand. Some of you, that gift is going to be on your phone. Some of you, whatever, whatever, if, it, if it's money, I want you to get it. But I want you to get your best gift in your hand right now. Get your best gift that you have. And let's start, let's give God's way. Come on, come on. Come on. We thanking him today. Yeah, we are. Come on, get that gift in your hand. Get that seed in your hand. Somebody need a harvest. You will never get a harvest if you hold on to the seed. Get the seed in your hand. It's sowing time. It's sowing time. Get your seed in your hand. It's sowing time. Uh-huh. We sowing today. 
It's seed sowing time. Get your seed in your hand. I don't care what it is. I want you to find a way to sow a seed today. Yeah, Lord. Ah, whoo, I feel good. Uh-huh. Get that seed in your hand. Let us pray. Father, we come now. God, we come to say thank you. We come, Lord, thanking you for those who've given your way. We thank you, Lord God, for those who've come now and they brought their seed and sown it in good soil. Lord God, we thank you for those who've come giving in faith your way. Lord God, we thank you for those who brought their tithe back unto you. We thank you for those who brought their offering. And we thank you, Lord God, for even those who've given sacrificially. Knowing, Lord God, full well that we can never beat you in our giving, but we ought to at least make an attempt. Father, we ask, we, we ask that you would take this seed, take this offering. I, we ask that you would bless it and multiply it, that your kingdom will be made manifest here on earth. We bless every heart and every hand that gave today. And Lord God, for those who just found themselves lacking, they just didn't have it. They wanted it so bad, but they just didn't have it. We pray, pray, God, that you would bless them this week. You would bless them even now, that on the very next occasion, where they have an opportunity to give, that they, they their earnest desire will be met by their abundance in which to, to worship you in their giving. Lord, bless your people today. Bless your people who gave. Meet every need now as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Let every heart say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, it's preaching time. Y'all, it's preaching time. And there is a preacher in the house. There's a preacher in the house. And y'all, I'm, 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 I'm full. I'm just getting back off of a little bit of a vac vacation. But I'm ready for a word. I reached out to the preacher and I told him that I, 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 that I, that I, I needed a word. And this preacher, this man of God, is always ready, always stands ready to bring a word to God's people. So I, so as the music plays softly, I present to some and introduce to others someone who's no stranger here, very, I, one of our very own sons of this house of Elevating Faith Ministries, Elder Carl Scott. This is a preacher and teacher of the gospel. This is a worshiper. This is a prophet. This is a prophet of God. And I pray now that God will give him prophetic utterance even as he speaks today. I'm praying right now that God will, sh will shake up the foundations and he would till the fallow ground of our heart that we will receive what God has to say to us through this mighty man, this mighty prophet, this preacher of the gospel. So without any further delay or ado, I present to some and introduce to others Elder Carl Scott. Receive him now in your own way. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Those of you that are listening this morning, that are on the sound of my voice, please just listen this morning. But what I want everybody to do this morning is just begin to lift your hands and worship. Just begin to open their mouths and worship. Lift your hands and worship. While you were sleeping last night, the cherubim and seraphim were worshiping God, giving him his praise. But there was nothing like the praise that comes from the redeemed. Appreciate your redemption. Appreciate the propitiation for your sin. Appreciate the stand-in. Appreciate the substitute that paid the price that you couldn't pay. Hallelujah, the debt was too large for you to pay. Your debt, if you tried to pay it, would be accepted by you. You weren't a perfect sacrifice. Give God praise this morning. Give him glory this morning. Give him honor this morning. I don't care what your week may have been like or what you may have gone through. Give your God praise this morning. Give him glory, hallelujah, for your new story. Somebody say amen this morning. Give him glory and praise this morning. He's due the worship. I don't care how you feel in your bodies this morning. Give him praise. Because dip inhaling and exhaling, give him praise for that very next breath. Your next breath is not promised, but give him praise for your breath that you have now. <clears throat> you everything to have breath, praise the Lord. Are you sensitive enough to the spirit this morning to give your God the praise? He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor to make the perfect sacrifice that you would have to be sacrificed. You would not be torn down for a perfect sacrifice to be given. Uh, no matter what you did, how much you paid, well, if you even gave your own blood, it wouldn't be acceptable. But God accepted the blood of his son as an atonement for you. He accepted bullets and rams as a uh, uh, substitute for a moment. But those sacrifices didn't take away sin. So we thank God this morning that he takes away sin by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Unadulterated blood, pure blood. 
that was worthy enough to appease the anger of God on your behalf. God, we want to honor you. We want to glorify you. We want to praise you and thank you this morning. God, I say thank you and ask that you anoint me this morning to speak your gospel, your word. God, you passed over me that I could speak your gospel. You passed over me when I wasn't thinking about you. God, it's kind of looking at me. You looked at your son's blood covering me, knowing that I would come around one day. And all of us that are listening, oh God, thank you, Father. We all fall short. We all sin. We all fall short of your glory. We were all sinners of God. So we say thank you this morning. We honor you this morning. We praise you this morning. Thank you for the strength of the Bible. That first lady, that first lady, God, we say thank you this morning. God, I come to the to proclaim this gospel. But God, I speak now. You may hear me. God says some of you have had a challenging week. Some of you have had challenging months. But God says, don't fret. Do not fret. Do not fret. Do not fret. And I speak a specific speech this morning from the kingdom of God to you, Angela Abraham. <clears throat> he says, but even because of those days that sometimes seem dark, God says, I'm giving you a fresh start. I don't want what you've gone through to be things that cause you to feel and be uh, 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 thinking about your future as a dim future. No, God says you have a bright future. You have a bright future as long as it resides on the inside of you. I speak now, Father, and I touch and agree with my wife this morning, Father, that we speak now with healing for Reverend Angela Abraham, your daughter, Father. I speak now that you touch every blood vessel, every cell that's on the inside of our body. I speak to our mind and the spirit of God that as a spirit lives, that a flesh will live. God, in the name of Jesus, I speak now that she be in good health and that she prosper, that the soul prosper. God, we say thank you. I speak life and strength continually in this ministry. I speak to the leadership of this ministry that you give them strength, oh God, for the task at hand. God, I say thank you, oh Lord, that you allow them not to get weary in well-doing. God, hallelujah, that the oil falls down like it flowed from Aaron's beard, oh God. God, in his robe, oh God, hallelujah, that you allow the fresh anointing to be available upon this ministry. God, I say thank you. Allow us to serve as leadership of this ministry, God, to stick together, oh God, in oneness and in unity. It's overwhelming of this ministry. Lord, allow the fresh all the poor, those that hear God, they will be healed in their home, oh God. The finances, they will come together, oh God. The ends are not eating, oh God. We say thank you. We glorify you and we praise you. Give God a give God a hand clap of praise and celebrate them this morning. If y'all heard the word that was spoken already, God, I say thank you. And if y'all look at your lives, God has passed over everybody that lives, everybody that pleases, he's passed over you. He saw his son's blood, he saw his son's sacrifice, he saw his son's prevail. We allow you to be fair. Oh, we can't take that for granted. Oh, we talked about Easter and we talked about uh, our Holy Week. How we passed over. And then we look at your lives and look at the times you came close to there, near death. But near death came near life. Because why? God is in control of death now. Jesus got the keys to hell and the grave. Hallelujah. So the devil is no more in control of life or death. But we want to give God praise and thanks this morning. As we was had such a phenomenal Holy Week on the last couple of weeks ago. As I was meditating and thinking about this message for the last couple of weeks. And I said, I know Easter is over and we've celebrated that. Well, do we not know Jesus is, 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 is seasoned every single day? It doesn't matter if we celebrate those specific days. But Jesus needs to be celebrated every day. We thank God for life. Can we thank God for life? We thank God for having Reverend Angela back today. In her body, sometimes I'm pretty sure she felt like she couldn't hardly make it sometimes, but her spirit was not agreeing with what her body was doing. But we thank God that we were able to see her smiling face because she's a great minister of God, of the gospel. That's why the enemy wants to attack your body. Why now? When you're helping those become disciples of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We accept the victory today everything over everything that tries to stop you and slow you down. That's just giving you more voice for testimony. Hallelujah. God hallelujah and so i want to just a little bit talk about this morning some things that occurred after the death and resurrection of jesus christ i wanted to just because some things have been in my stirring in my spirit concerning this because this was a magnificent event and as we think about this uh you get your bibles this morning and we're gonna get the scriptures this morning go to the book of matthew chapter 27 we're gonna start with verse 45 but i wanted to just talk in your hearing this morning as i begin to think about this i think about how the road to the cross, the road to this great accomplishment that what it would cause, what it would change, what it would do. But he had to suffer on our behalf. He was the substitute. He became sin. He became what you and I will be performing every single day of our lives. That when we came into the world out of our mother's womb, we were sinners and we didn't even know it. There was a price that we needed to pay that we couldn't afford to pay. But we're talking about a savior here 
And sometimes you got to look at it like we talked about on a few weeks ago, how God could have started all over from scratch and threw the towel in, but he didn't do that. The one reason he didn't do that is because why? He should he could have threw the towel in and started over before he breathed into you. He should have he should have started over from scratch with the form. But when he put his breath into you, that added your value. Somebody say amen. Do y'all today know that you have a value? Don't let society say that you don't have a value. If you don't have the monies in your account or your pockets, don't let the world decide that you don't have a value. Don't let Facebook say you don't have a value. Don't let your friends say that you don't have a value. If they say you don't have a value, you're around them, they're not your friends anyway. Don't let your, your surroundings tell you that you don't have a value. You add value to your surrounding because you have Christ living on the inside of you. Somebody say amen. I'm ready this morning. I'm on ready, set, go. This morning, we want to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 45. It says, and well, who the, who the, let me see, chapter 27, verse 45 says this, you all. Let me take my time. Let me take my time here. All right, here we go. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Oh, I'm sorry, let me slow down. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, this here, when you see this, it means that he feels as though his God has left him. But we understand God did not leave him. But let me go back up a little further. It says that in the sixth hour, that is noon, there was a darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. Think about this, you all, because this is significant. Let me read that again. Now, from the sixth hour, noon, there was a darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. This is at 12 noon and to 3 p.m. There was darkness all over the land. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 9, 8 and 9, it says, And it shall come to pass that in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in a clear sky. Just a week or two ago, on April, the fourth month, and the eighth day, we saw an eclipse. Some were in the path of total darkness, and some were in the path of partial darkness. Looking through the day as I was working, watch this, y'all. This is incredible to me. As I'm working throughout the day, I'm looking at the sky, not necessarily at the sun. I did take a couple peeks, not directly. But I'm looking at the atmosphere, the environment, and I'm seeing slowly around 2 and 3 p.m., I'm seeing some dimming on. on. I'm seeing the, uh, the skies look kind of gloomy. When you look at things like that, they have an effect on things that are below. But now we see now, in 12 noon, the sun is supposed to be at its peak. But now, at the sun's peak, we see darkness. Because now the Savior has given up the ghost. His spirit has left his body. And now there's total darkness. Wait a minute here. What are you talking about, Scott? What I'm saying now is this. That the elements that he created are more sensitive to his death, burial, and resurrection than human beings are. He didn't die for rocks. He didn't die for the elements, but he died for us. Can somebody give God a praise for that right there? What we have now been at a point in our lives that we were once dead in our sins and trespasses. So as we were dead in our sins and trespasses, we were in darkness. Darkness means the absence of light. There was no light to be seen. So what type of feeling do you think they had as they mocked him, as they ridiculed him, as they beat him, as he's on this road to being sacrificed? He's being slaughtered. He's being beaten. And now watch this, you all that are parents or grandparents or cousins or they have nieces and nephews. How would you feel if your child was being beaten or being treated unfairly? How do you think these mothers feel that his sons are getting shot for no reason? The guy in the Chicago in his, in his vehicle, <clears throat> I don't know how many shots they received. But it, it shot a number of shots in this vehicle because he didn't have on a seatbelt. Come on, you all. How cold and treacherous do you have to be? But now they have the support of the law. Uh-oh. They have support of the government on their side when they wear these uniforms, those uniforms. But the cops or those that are representing the law have laws to abide, but some of them are breaking the law. But what we have now is this, the response of the elements to him dying. If he was not the son of God, how could those things occur? How could the elements respond? So that's why I say every time we get up or get a chance or an opportunity, every time you put your feet on the floor, somebody ought to need to give God some, need to give God some praise. You owe him a praise. 
There are things you might have done in your day that you didn't even know about that God could take the grace and the mercies from you, but he decided to let you live. But you must be mindful of the substitute. You must be mindful of the sacrifice. I don't want you to feel bad because we're all going to make mistakes, but I want you to be mindful in the forefront of your mind that somebody stood in my place. Somebody say amen. How many of you want to take y'all back to your childhood for just a minute? How many of you that when you were a child, when you were young, and I know some of you all that have more than one sibling, how do you feel sometimes when you have a sibling or that has done something wrong, but you receive the punishment for that sibling? Mom, dad, I didn't do this, but yet you received the punishment. I remember there was a case when I was in the second grade and we were in class and we were grading our papers. And this young girl asked me to take her paper up. So when I get to the teacher, I had the girl's paper first. I didn't look at her paper, but if you got a certain amount of answers wrong, then the teacher will give you a pop on the hand. So when I gave the teacher the girl's paper, not looking at it myself, the girl had bad grades on the paper. She didn't get a certain amount right. And so the teacher said, give me your hand. She popped me, pop. But I said, ma'am, I said, teacher, that's not my paper. And I gave her my paper. She tried to wipe my hand to make the pain go away. But I received punishment for somebody else who did something wrong when I didn't do it. But Jesus didn't give a mumbling word, you all, when he was approaching that cross. Why? Because he was like a sheep in the midst of a slaughter. Somebody say amen. He didn't give a mumbling word. Somebody say amen. Are y'all being blessed by this word this morning, y'all? Because I certainly am. He said not a mumbling word. When I began to think about this as I was meditating last night and this morning, I began to see Abraham has to sacrifice his son Isaac. And as they make their way to the hill of Golgotha, as they make their way to sacrifice his son, and he's holding his hand up, and the angel says, Abraham, Abraham, God shall surprise to provide his own sacrifice see i know that was a ram in the bush but this here is symbolic for what abraham did through faith caused god to believe in god it actually happened that he sacrificed his son he didn't have to actually go through with it but because of his faith he was willing to do so for god and so what god sees now is i see now that you are like i am that you are willing to sacrifice what i will sacrifice something that means so much to you and when I begin to think about this, this is the place on Golgotha Hill, the place of the skull that they take your Savior, Jesus Christ, and hang him on a tree. And as I begin to think about this, this, this tree, Dr. Elliot, I begin to think about when it said in Deuteronomy and in Galatians, curses any man that's hanging on a tree. This now is placing him under God's curse. Somebody say amen this morning. That's why he would say, Eli, Eli, Eli Sabathani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why? He's not forsaking his son, but he is forsaking sin. Why? Because he had to become sin. He became you. He became me. So now what he sees on the cross is he's cursed. Why? Because he's sin. So I want y'all to understand crucifixion is something that's assigned to those that are slaves and criminals. This is a capital punishment. But Jesus did no wrong. Somebody say, I mean, if y'all know that Jesus did no wrong, you hold your hand up and give God a praise today when you know he did no wrong. He did no wrong. He did no wrong. But you can think of wrongs you did just yesterday. Somebody give God a praise this morning. He is your substitute. He is your propitiation. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, what I want to ask you today is this, you all. When you were living in your world of darkness, the, the absence of light, sometimes we were walking in this mindset. Watch this. Some of us had the knowledge of God, but yet we were still walking in darkness. Somebody say amen. We have knowledge and introduction to God when we were younger or in our day being introduced to him and accepted him. But yet and still we ignore the light and we wanted to walk in darkness. Why? Because darkness seemed more pleasurable than the light did. Because why? The light seemed like it had too many restrictions for us. But as we were walking in darkness with knowledge of Christ and what his sacrifice was, we still walk in darkness in the pleasure of it. And the devil wanted you to stay in that place of darkness. Somebody say amen this morning. He wanted you to stay in darkness. Why? Because he know that you had a purpose. He knew that you were called by God. So he wants to call you to be so enamored with pleasure. And that's what the world is today. Say so they are so enamored with pleasure that the Christian world seems like a world that's too restrictive. But now I want to tell y'all something. Y'all think about this. If the enemy could cause a third of the angels in heaven to fall, how do you think how easy is earth in his hand? He's the prince of the air. How do you think the earth is? How strong do you think you are? If you're not constantly killing the flesh daily, crucifying the flesh daily, you can also succumb. Somebody say amen. I'm speaking truth here. You got to understand today that you have to be mindful of your armor because if the devil sees any opening in your armor, he's looking for a place to get in. He's cunning. He's deceiving. You got to watch the things that cause you pleasure. Why? Because he already knows these things. He want to cause you to bow down in your flesh to cause your whole destiny to be wiped out. He wants you to remain in darkness. Why? 
that they heard this saying called misery loves company. He knows his days are short. He knows he's going to be defeated. He's already defeated, but he wants to make you think that you're not going to be victorious. He wants to call calamities. He wants you to be involved with things that you damn yourself in your flesh that cause your spirit not to overcome, not to be doing the things and the mission that God has assigned you to do. He wants you to sing downtrodden, so overwhelmed in pleasures. And sometimes you got to understand the thing that the flesh desires is wars against the things of the spirit. Somebody say amen. I'm feeling the spirit this morning, you all, because he wants those that are called by God. And some of them where they are right now, I don't feel that they call. Some don't feel they have a purpose. Some have been so downtrodden because sometimes the pleasure seems pleasurable for a minute. Sin is pleasurable for a moment. But as you're involved in that pleasure, if you're on drugs, if you're on the streets, those things become overwhelming. Then you'll get your life into a certain point in life that you're depressed, that you're down, you're beaten down, you don't have nothing. Famine is not around you. Possessions are not around you. And you just left with yourself. Because those pleasures are calling you to feel empty. Pleasures are trying to cause you to damn your soul. These momentary problems, watch this. These momentary pleasures are for eternal damnation if you stay involved. But how many know today that while I was in my darkness, while I was in those pleasures, God still watched over me. He still covered me. He still watched over me. He still went over me. He still passed over me. Am I, I, I speaking to anybody? Am I coming down anybody's street? He passed over me while I was in my mess. He knew I was conscious of him, but I was conscious more of my pleasures. Somebody give God praise today to know that he passed over me. Y'all wave your hands. Put your hand over me. Say he passed over me. Somebody say amen. His grace passed over you. His mercies passed over you. Hallelujah. He passed over me and he bent over me. Dr. Pamela, I thank you for that. He bent over me. I see what he's doing. And watch this, you all. It ain't just because you're messing up, but you got to understand you got an accuser of the brethren. The enemy's going before God. God, look what he's doing. You call them. They, watch this. He's testifying about you. They have a purpose. God, they have a purpose. He already knows what your purpose is, but you can't see it because you're overwhelmed in a place of darkness. And that's where he wants you to be. But he says, God, look at them. They're not doing what you call them to do. Can I go and affect their life? Y'all got to understand this. What of God? I know we understand the talk about Job. Have you considered my servant? But well, what if he said, I consider, have you considered Angela? Have you considered A-B-E? He's a preacher and he loves God. He's a shoe and evil. Have you considered Jackie Scott? Have you considered First Lady Rose? Have you considered them? Oh, he says, I haven't considered them, but he's observed you, Angela. He knows your state of mind. Where is her mind in sickness? Where is she going to be, God? Is she going to leave God and die? But he says, no, Eroskaba, I got a relationship with Angela that you don't even know about, but I'm going to show you our closest. I'm going to show you that her and I have covenant. I don't care what's going on in her body. She still has a praise. She still has an amen. She still has a hallelujah. She's still going to give me a glory when she's not feeling well. When she's not feeling well, if not feeling her best, she still has a praise. Because why? She has had an introduction to the real and living and true God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise for her right now. Angela, I see you walking and talking in the glory. I see you walking and anointing and laying hands. Hallelujah. My Roskaba, you have a testimony. We are free by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Angela, do you have words? You have a testimony. Somebody say amen. Some of y'all that's listening to me right now, y'all just don't know it. Some of y'all are in darkness, but pick yourself up because you have a testimony. Don't let where you are now in your present circumstance be a total destiny for you. God says, I'm cleaning you up and I'm picking you up right now from the milk and the marley clay. Just appreciate where you are right now. I don't care what state you're in right now. That's not your permanence. Why? Because God has assigned you to purpose. He has assigned you to destiny. I want y'all today to clap on to your destiny. Uh, y'all got to understand right now, this is not your ending. It's it's just your new beginning. I thank God for washing me up and cleaning me up, getting me out of the muck and marry, taking me out of the place of pleasures. Hallelujah. That would overwhelm my life. Sometimes you get frustrated with yourself because you didn't create yourself. God, why am I still dealing with this right now? You have to understand the source of things. It didn't just come from your mama or your daddy. Somebody say amen. There was a garden of sin that through one man sin came into the world, but through this one man, Jesus Christ, sin, you were resurrected. God, I say thank you. Sin came, but God says that's not it for them because they, I am inside of them. They just have to be able to see that I am calling them to a purpose and a place with me. I have not thrown away my children. The children of Israel are his chosen people. I don't care how bad they mess up. They still are the apple of his eye. Don't count them out. Somebody give God praise because he didn't count you out. 
He got me out of darkness and brought me into the marvelous light. Y'all got to thank God for the light. To think about the times in your life that may have been darkness. Sometimes you may have thought about suicide. You felt so bad about where you are. I want to end my life right now. And you got to think about it. So many people did. But I'm glad I didn't go through with it, Angela. I just kind of thought that was it. Because I felt so bad about where I was and the mistakes I caused and the people I hurt. But God says, I'm sick and tired of me, God. You got to bring me into life. I got into it in front of a mirror, Angela. Because I had an introduction to God. And I began to pray, God. I'm sick and tired of myself. You are the only one that can help me. They might have thought I was crazy, but I was by myself in front of the mirror looking at me, discussing with myself. But I had an introduction. There was an everlasting one that was down in my heart. It was in my memory bank. It was in my heart bank. And I had to pull from that resource. Those came in your school. Hallelujah. I pulled from that resource. And that resource got me into a place where I'm hearing the word of God. It's called, see, this is the key. The enemy wants you to feel so bad about yourself. Not forgiving yourself that you won't come out of that funk. He wants your life to be, watch this. He wants to bring suggestions to your mindset to cause you to contemplate suicide. Watch this. He can't do it when he'll bring the subliminal. And if you follow the subliminal, the subliminal can take you out. But the power greater is he that's within me, that's he that's in the world. I don't care about those suggestions because those suggestions may have been in my mind. But I got a God that's greater than those. I don't know, about than those subliminal thoughts. Sometimes those days were dark and I thought I wouldn't see the light. But God says, I got light for you, son. Just wake up and follow me. And I will show you that I'm with you till the ends of the world. So these days, I don't care what I am without. I know I got him with me. Somebody say, Amen. Can y'all give God a hand clap of praise? That's a great place to praise him because he didn't leave you in darkness. Why? Because there was presence, light that exists. You just have to find it. The light is waiting to be accepted by you, but will you accept the light? Come on, y'all. I feel I need my church today, y'all. Somebody say, Amen. This cross he's hanging on is a curse. Is a curse. But if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Y'all got to understand today. That on that cross you are. And on that cross. Y'all got to understand this crucifixion is for slaves. It was for those hardened criminals. Jesus had did no wrong. But I want y'all to understand. As the cross is laying on the ground. They're attaching him to the cross with those nails. Y'all seen those nails on the railroad track. Those spikes. They were nailing him through his hands. And through his feet. On the cross. His back was turned up. So how do you think he felt laying on that. My, as my cousin Elliot would say. On that hewn cross. He's getting ready to be hung up. But I want y'all to, excuse me, understand something. As he's being placed on that cross, and the cross had to be put in its place. When they have him on the cross, and they put him in, put in the cross in his place, you got to understand something. As he's hanging, they don't put the cross down gently. No, sir, no, ma'am. They put it down. It's a thud. That thud was heard all around the world. It's a thud. So now it agitates the person that's on the cross. It makes them feel more pain. Why? To increase the pain of death. Somebody say amen. That's what he was willing to take for you and I. And while he's on the cross hanging, what they began to do is this, you all. They began to be on the ground casting lots for his garments. Who will get this and who will get that? They're casting lots for his garments. Because while we don't want him to have nothing, we're going to strip him. We cast a lot for his garments. They're gambling for his garments. If he or you all are uh, talking about him and ridiculing him, what value is his garment? Is that a keepsake for you to talk about ridiculing what he had, what he possessed? This is all he had. And they're hanging him on the cross, the rugged cross to be cursed. He's doing all of those things for you and I. Before you get into the knowledge of him. Just hearing about him don't mean you have knowledge. But he wants you to understand who he is and the purpose of him dying. And the world wants to ridicule and say that Jesus wasn't in existence. Then you got the atheists that weren't in the talk about he's not in existence. He's not a true God. They don't want to believe. Woo. Well, let me slow down. Let me calm down. He said, and it should come in that day. Say the Lord that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and will darken the earth in a clear day. Can we read and understand the signs? God is validating that that is my son. Y'all, somebody say amen. In about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There have been times, you all, that I felt that I didn't feel the presence of God. I don't want to live on this earth and not feel his presence. But if I can't trace him, I got to trust him. If I can't feel him, I got to trust him. If I, don't, if I can't feel him, I got to believe him, because I know he exists. And some of you all, not some of you all, because I can't see y'all but two people right now, but my point is this, some of you all, Got to understand, 
If you don't believe in God, just go outside and look around. See what he's created. I've been on cruises where I just look outside in Turkey and different places, and I see the mountains, and I see what God has created. And I didn't give you all the title this morning. I know I got so excited. But the title of this lesson today is this, After the Death and Resurrection. Somebody say amen with me this morning. Some of them that stood, verse 47, verse 40, and some of them that stood there when they had heard that said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. This still monk ain't taught him. Verse 51, verse 50, I should say. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. There's also a seismic fault in that area. So an earthquake is not insignificant, but an earthquake at that time, the rocks and now are renting themselves. Why? Because the death of the Savior, the rocks split. So we see now that, that the elements, the environment is responding to his death. Now, I'm going to ask you a question this morning. I don't want you to answer, but I want you to think for a minute. Was it the whipping and beating by the centurion soldiers, Roman soldiers, worse? Or was it by the high priest and the elders saying, watch this, y'all, listen to this. When Jesus was going through the judgment halls and judgment halls, being brought before Caiaphas and Pilate, when Jesus was being presented to them, there was two people that they were talking about whether it was Barabbas or Jesus. Watch this, y'all. Some may know this, some may not. But do you really know that Barabbas' first name was Jesus? You got Jesus Barabbas, and you got Jesus the Messiah. So now, what happens now is they understand the punishment of crucifixion. Why did they not say, lock him up and just bring Barabbas out? No. They said they understood. Watch this, you all. Those that could serve with you in church, in your organizations, could be the ones that say, behind your back, crucify them. But they didn't say it behind the back. They said it in public, crucify him. Not lock him up, not just beat him, give him some lashes. No, they said crucify. Why is this the point that I'm making today? Because sometimes you will be, at, watch this. When you are a person or a child of God, you don't expect betray. You don't expect betrayal by the ones you follow or worship with. Not that Jesus worshiped with them, but what are they supposed? To, if they're high priests, what are they supposed to represent? They're supposed to represent the church. But you can notice this when Peter, when Peter, he asked Peter and the fellows, "Who does men say that I am?" And Peter said, "Thou the Christ, the Son of the Living God." He said, "I'm going to build my church on this rock, on this revelation, Peter. I'm building on this, not what the high priests are supposed to be representing." I am not saying that all of the priests in that day were wicked, but these high priests, y'all. Watch, this is incredible. Understand something here. These high priests had major influence. Are y'all hearing me? They had major influence. So now we see the spiritual and the political hand in hand. Watch this, you all. Don't think that spirit is not even alive today. You'll be surprised now because you think about the evangelicals in the church. Then you got the political. You can't church some of those. You can't trust some. Watch this, y'all. You can't trust some of those that are evangelicals, and you can't trust some in the government. But what you can trust in, the one that died on that cross. Somebody say amen. Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Messiah. We want Jesus the Messiah to be crucified. Now, when I think about this, you all, there at one point in Deuteronomy in Galatians 3.14 as well, it talks about the veil. Let me read this. Let me read this to you all, because I want you to understand this. The tabernacle of Israel was divided into two rooms by a thick veil of blue, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. Look at the look at the uh, the veil. Now, as y'all look at this picture here, you got a veil in the front and you got a veil in the back. There were actually two. So now, in the holy place was located the altar of incense, the lamp stand, and the table for the bread of presence. In the second room, the most holy place or holy of holies was the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat, which is a solid gold lid placed on top of the Ark. It was also the place of the propitiation where sins were covered by the sprinkled blood of the innocent sacrifice. Oh, 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 oh watch this, y'all. Did y'all hear that? The innocent sacrifice. The sacrifice didn't do no wrong. It was innocent. And it say guilty sacrifice. Behind the veil in the holy folds was the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of the divine presence. 
the Shekinah glory shining above the mercy seat and between the figures of the cherubim. It was not the object of the veil to give access to God, for it was that which prevented it. The veil was protecting those that were coming there. The priest could only come in there, but they could only come when God called for them to come. They didn't just go in because they had the title of a priest. No, and they had to sprinkle blood for themselves and for the people. God accepted this substitute. This was a foreshadowing of things that were to come. So this separation caused them to be separated from God. The Jewish historian Josephus, I like this part. The Jewish historian Josephus said the veil was four inches thick and that horses tied at each side could not pull the veil apart. Uh-oh. My question is this, you all. Who tore the veil? He caused men to weave it. Horses that, okay, have y'all seen a horse in y'all life? Any of y'all in the nighttime? My granddaughter was a farmer, so I've seen a horse before. But if you got two horses, you know how strong horses are. When you see them running, all you see is muscles. But God sanctioned the veil. Hallelujah. He sanctioned the veil. So now if you got two horses, they can't put it apart. No, no, this is not the right time. Why? Because they're going to still be separated from mankind. Why? Because if they come near me, they're unholy. I will kill them. Why? I don't want to, but it's my holiness. I can't connect with sin. Somebody give God praise right now. When you think about what you did yesterday, two years ago, three years ago, when God could allow you to be taken out and allow to set the path over and allow you to go through what you deserve. Somebody say amen. Now, it says when Jesus died, the veil rent. Watch this, y'all. The invisible hand of God rips the veil. He rips the veil. Why? Now, I understand. See, what? I, watch this. God allowing there to be a veil was for your protection. Uh, Y'all ain't hearing me. The veil being in place was for your protection, not his. He did not want to destroy man, but he wanted to be accepted by man. Somebody say amen. Thank, watch this, y'all. Why? How can we today sit in good conscience unless we know God has accepted us? Oh, I'm glad God accepted me. But all my, when you watch this, you can even judge yourself when you think about what you used to do. When you think about, I knew God, but I still was going out in darkness. Oh, somebody say amen. But he understood that. But Jesus Christ became you. No, he don't want to come down here as no angel, no sir, no ma'am. He wanted to come in the likeness of sinful flesh. He wanted to come looking like you. So when the enemy saw him, all he sees is you looking like uh, he look, you looking like Adam when he sinned and messed up in the garden. But he tried to tempt you in your flesh. When he sees that, he tried. Watch this. When he came to Jesus, even in the garden, to tempt him, he tried to tempt him with bread. He tried to tempt him with certain things. Watch this, y'all. As I begin to think about this, he tried to take him to all the kingdoms that he had control over. But watch this. Some of us will fall for less than that. You don't have to get shown no kingdom. You're hungry. You're starving. That Snickers bar, that candy bar, that cookie looks good. That's the time when you get tempted the most, when you're trying to fast and abstain yourself. Are y'all hearing me this morning? The veil was rent. It's four inches thick. It's tied to each side. Who tore the veil? Watch this, y'all. I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you this question. It's Catholicism, has Lutheranism, has Protestantism, has Baptist, Pentecostal, religion, etc. Are we reweaving the veil? It can't be seen, but it's an invisible veil that calls a separation. Are we judging those that we feel as though they are not being are not worthy enough to be a part of us? Are we wearing our hats and our starchy clothes? Or are we have a carrying an aura that we're putting up a veil that we got a we got a monopoly on God? Is the church doing that? Are the evangelicals putting and weaving together the veil? Are they weaving back together the veil? Are we talking about a certain group or sect that they're weaving the veil of separation? Do we feel like we got so much going on? We so cleaned up. And I'm talking about the church as a whole. Are we so in a place in a position now that we can shoo those that are still in darkness? Or are we a welcoming church? Or are we a welcoming people? Because God, I guarantee you, each of us that are listening has a different story. Pastor A.B. talked about the bottle, the alcohol. He shared his testimony. There are some alcoholics that may hear this, this program. There's some prostitutes that may hear this program. There are some druggies that might hear this program. But I guarantee you something, you all, that elevating faith is a receiving in an open church. We have not reweaved the veil. At this church, this church has been resurrected. This church has a purpose. This church has a breath. Does anybody know that you're alive? Well, how do you deal with your own resurrection and resuscitation? Let me slow down. How have you dealt with your, your resurrection and your resuscitation? God gave me back your breath. 
God gave me a testimony when I knew I could have been dead and gone and in the grave. But God says, no, death is not his purpose right now, but I got a life for him. Why? To bring life to somebody else's life. I'm allowing Scott to live because he is a living testimony. Angela is a living testimony. Amy is a living testimony. Jackie is a living testimony. Rose is a living testimony. Every day you live and breathe. I want y'all to begin to think about the thoughts that you had in your mind that were thoughts of darkness that you didn't share with anybody. Somebody say amen. Thank God for just the way you begin to think now. You all think, watch this, y'all. Think Think in the mindset of resurrection. Think in the mindset of resuscitation. I got a breath now. I got a mouth now. And I'm going to make it plain to you all that I live. If I live, I know Christ lives because he lives inside of me. Somebody say amen. Amen. The veil was rent. The earthquake and the rocks rent. Watch this, y'all. The tombs will open. Oh, y'all, y'all got to hear me. The tombs will open. The tombs will open. The tombs will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tombs will open. There were people inside of those tombs. But after he resurrected, after he resurrected, oh, now the earthquake, the earthquake, he resurrected. And it came out of the grave, verse 53, after his resurrection, because Christ had to be the first fruit of the dead. You can't rise before me, but as I rise, you're going to rise. And he went into the holy city and appeared unto many. They did. They came out and appeared to the holy city. Do you all walk around now sometimes wishing those that have passed and went on that you could see them alive one more time? How would you treat them? How you love them? How you miss them? And what, you know what we had to God if you all, Angela and ABE, saw your mom and your dad again. Hallelujah. Ma, ma, ma. Hallelujah. If you saw your mom and dad, if I, if I saw my mother, little Estelle Brown, walking around her five foot one and a half self, if I saw her walking again, I, I would be so happy. If I saw my brother Jeff walking again, I, resurrected from his grave, I would be so happy. I wouldn't think it's a ghost, but I would know it would only be by the hand of the mighty God for those tombs were open because of his resurrection. I know that there was an earthquake. Earthquake can shake things and make things come loose, but those that got out of the grave was only by the power of the Holy Ghost. As Jesus was in the grave, laying there for three days, his body was there, but his spirit was gone. Jesus also went to hell to preach to those that were captive in prison and freed them as well. Back in the days of Noah, when God had long suffering, God brought those that were, he preached to those that were in hell and gave them another chance. Somebody say, hey, amen. Give God praise today. Give him honor that today you are. The tombs are open. Watch this, y'all. What are the dead places in your life? What tomb can God open in your life today? If there is a dead place in your life, can these bones live? God, only you know. God said they can live. Y'all, we got to continue to speak life. People are walking around now, and they are dead. They are zombies. I know they got this show called The Walking Dead. There are many that are The Walking Dead and don't even realize it. This world is a world that's beguiling. This, God, this world is a world that's fooling people. Why? Because of pleasures. Like an all-time high. I don't care what type of relationship these people have. They are relationships of pleasure. Some of them. And we all were once there. We can't look down on them. But what we have to do is represent the light. And I want to make this statement. I was on a, 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 how, a message chain at one point. And in this message chain, this message group, they would put out, people would say certain things positive about God. But whatever happened, some numbers may have gotten changed. But the message went out to somebody that was an atheist. The atheist said, get me off of this, let this chain. And so there was supposed to be believers on that chain as well. And I saw people begin to turn against the atheists and they begin to call out and say certain things. But I'm thinking to myself, I don't make a comment. I say, get me off of this chain. I don't want to have anything to do with this. Why? Because if y'all are supposed to represent Christ, you're not representing with the right breath. You're not representing resurrected. Oh, you're not resurrected. You're not speaking with resuscitation. How do you expect to win those that don't believe going back and forth with them? I said, get me off of this chain. I don't know why I was on it in the first place, but get me off. I don't want to have anything to do with this. I said, I didn't make any comments. Why? Because that's not how I represent Christ. He wants you to represent with a breath. And if you don't have nothing good to say or heard, don't say nothing at all. Even a fool is considered wise when he shuts his mouth. Somebody say amen. And I'm almost done. And I want to bring up this final point, and I'm going to be out of y'all's head. Verse 54. Now when the centurion... They that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done. They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the son of God. Where were his accusers? Why does the centurion have to say this truly was the son of God? Being a centurion soldier, you owe allegiance and cohorts. You're not just any jellyback centurion that you had to stay. Because this right now is too important to file up. So now this centurion has to be one that has been bred to be hard. 
ABE, First Lady Rose, when you think about your military training, they don't treat you to be, they don't train you to be pork or soft back or jelly back when you are represented in the Marine Corps. No, when we think about the Marines, we think about those that are hard and trained, ready to fight. My boot camp was eight weeks, but I heard my dreams and those with special forces for about 13 weeks. But the bottom line is this, because why you need extra training? Why? Because you're going to go out on the battlefield. Hallelujah. We don't need nobody soft representing the United States going out onto the battlefield. But I'm going to tell y'all something, and I'm going to say this without calling names. But if you look at our military now, we got a lot of them that are soft. And I'm going to leave that right there. But oh, when I think about ABE, when you represent the Marine Corps, y'all have creeds that y'all state by. Because they want to get that in you. Why? They want to train you for how you're supposed to operate. They want you to speak like a Marine. They want to speak like you represent the United States. So when you go on the battlefield, you're not soft. Why? Because your enemy is not playing with you. Are y'all hearing me? But how cold do you have to be to be over a crucifixion? It was not just that the centurions were hard, but those elders and high priests were hard as well. Because why? They recommended crucifixion. Pontius Pilate said, I don't see no wrong that this man has done. Y'all got to understand some, what happens when you're faced with your own crucifixion. We got social media now today that they will crucify you. You're supposed to be a Christian. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Can you handle your own crucifixion? Coming from those that's supposed to love you. Somebody say, hey, and men. This last point I'm about to make. And many women there, verse 55 of Paul, followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. I can't leave out the women. I cannot. No, this is too important. When the men, the disciples, all scattered, the women remained. Now some in the church don't even want to recognize women as being able to be preachers, prophets, and teachers of God. Women can also be disciples. The women didn't have the title of disciple, but they were disciples. They stood there. They were with Jesus, and they saw what happened to him. They didn't mind if they got ridiculed. They didn't mind if they got beaten for the sake of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the women. Among them, which was Mary Magdalene, Mary the Martha, Martha of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. <clears throat> women celebrate yourselves. I know we're out of Women's History Month, but I still got to celebrate you. I want to give God glory today for this message. The first thing that occurred was darkness, the absence of light. The second was the veil of the temple was rent in two. The third, the earthquakes and the rocks went rent. Fourth, the tombs were open. And five, the centurion was watching. I want y'all today to just celebrate God, give him honor and praise today, you all. God, I want to pray today, God. I hope that somebody heard something today that may have changed your life. God, thank you for resuscitating us. Thank you for resurrecting us, God, out of a dead place, God. I say thank you. We were all dead and sinning in our trespasses, oh God. Thank you for bringing us back to life, bringing us back to our sanity, God. I pray today that somebody heard this and their life has changed. I pray today that depression has left somebody's home, that oppression has left somebody's home and their mindset. I pray now, God, that we will do what you called us to do in our resurrected state. God, resurrect the mind of somebody today that has listened. Resurrect their spirit, Lord, stir up the, the, the spirit, God. Fan the flame of them, God, that they can do and be answering a call, oh God, that you've assigned them to. God, make total healing, give total healing to marriages, give total healing to relationships, oh God. But God, close our relationships that need to be closed. God, I say thank you for saving our souls, saving our lives. God, we've been near death, but God, we were near life. God, I say thank you. God, those are under the sound of my voice, Lord, touch their mindset, touch their spirit, oh God. Allow them to accomplish, oh God. Hallelujah. What you said that they can accomplish. God, I pray today for this ministry, the strength of this ministry, the oneness of this ministry, the unity of this ministry, the life of this ministry. God, I say I thank you for the Lives that is touched. God, allow the prayer book, the prayer book, the prayer book, the prayer book to touch somebody's life, oh God, and to change and to heal as they read the page. God, I want to glorify you and I want to thank you for what you've said and done today. Mind our hearts and your people. I honor you, glorify you, pray today, Father. In your name I pray, Father. Amen. Amen. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to the ABE to do the alcohol to present Christ to you today. But I want you all to just celebrate this man of God as he takes the mic to do the altar call. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes, God. Yes, God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, powerful, powerful word from the Lord. The man of God just preached so powerfully. The man of God just preached so eloquently. Talking about the absence of light. 
he talked about the veil being torn from top to bottom. He talked about the rocks, the earthquake and the rocks being broken and the graves being opened. But he talked most of all about our Savior. All of these things happen in the creation because the Creator had sacrificed himself in order to redeem us back unto God. The Creator, Jesus the Christ, Mary's baby, was hanging on that cross became our sacrifice. Lama, Lama, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? God never turned his back on his son, but he could not look on the sin that Jesus had become. If you're here today, if you're here today, if you've never confessed him, if you've never accepted him, after the resurrection and you still haven't accepted him, after the crucifixion and after the resurrection and you still have not accepted him, now is your time. We marveled across the land as we saw the eclipse where the sun, where the the sun in all its brilliance the visibility of the light was obstructed by something that got in its way what is getting in your way that's causing Jesus not to shine in your life what sin has, is trying to block out Jesus from your life what have you done is it the church? Are we now trying to reweave the veil, once again separating man from God with our actions, with our words, and with our hypocrisy? Are we trying to restitch the veil instead of inviting the lost, the least, the lacking, and the lonely to step through the veil to get to him? Are we looking any longer for the lost, the least, the lacking, and the lonely and inviting them to come on this side of the veil? He tore the veil for the lost. He tore the veil for the least. He tore the veil for the lacking. He tore the veil for the lonely. Why don't you come? The word of God is this, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. And if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For it's with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. It's with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation. Why don't you come now if you're lost and you've never accepted him? Why don't you come now if you're lonely? He said that he's a friend that sticks closer to a brother. Why don't you come now? If you're lacking, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, the least. He said, inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So I'm calling the lost, I'm calling the lonely, I'm calling the lacking, and I'm calling the least to come now unto God. Come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus if you're lost. There you will find rest from your weary souls. Why don't you come now? My second appeal is those of you, you don't have a church home. You walked away from the church a long time ago, already saved, already part of the body of Christ, but you don't have a place to call your very own. Why don't you come now? Why don't you come now and consider this place called Elevating Faith Ministries. We're not saying that we're elevated as if we've already arrived. But God has taken our faith from faith to faith. 
Sometimes our faith gets higher when we go through things in life. But we're elevating. We're elevating until we get to where Jesus is. So why don't you come? And my third and final appeal is for those who just need prayer. Those who just need prayer. Won't you bring your petitions around the altar? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bring your petitions now. There's an anointing now on Reverend Angela Abraham to pray for all three appeals. Reverend Abraham, would you pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day. God, we come before you as empty pitchers before a full fountain. God, we thank you for the word that was given today. God, we, are, we ask that you would allow that word, that powerful word that came from Elder Carscott to penetrate through our souls and through our minds and our bodies. Now, God, for those individuals who are lost, for those individuals who are lacking, God, we reach out to those individuals right now. God, we ask that you fill every empty space, that you be found to be a savior for the lost, and that you be found to be a comfort for the lonely. We ask this for you on this day, God. Bless like only you can. Lord, we don't come to you just to say that we are there. We come because we know that we're in your presence, God. There is fullness. God, somebody needs to be filled on today. God, people have been struggling. So God, I, I ask that you would fill them like only you can, God. And for those individuals who don't have a group of believers to connect with and to fellowship with, God, we, we pray for those individuals, God. God, we pray for those people who don't have a church home. God, we are a church, as Scott said in his message, God, we are an inviting church. We are a welcoming church because we are a redeemed church. God, we thank you that what was done on the cross, God, it was not only done for us as individuals, but as this entity of a church that we represent, as what you said to Peter, upon this rock I build my church principles of grace and of love and of power and strength is this church building. Thank you for our pastor. And God, for those individuals who are struggling, those individuals who are sick, God, you know the things that you've brought me through. God, you know the struggles that I've had to endure. God, but God, I thank you that you are a keeping God. I thank you that you are a healing God. I thank you that you are mind regulating God. I thank you, God, that as we celebrated the resurrection, we celebrate a renewal, a time of refreshing. And God, for every individual that's in the sound of my voice on this morning, God, we ask that you be with them, that you keep them, that you let this invitation, let it be an invitation to life. As Scott said in his sermon a couple of weeks ago, let them have a near life experience. God, so many people are dealing with near death experience, but it's time for us to experience the resurrected Jesus. God, let us touch the nail, scorned hands, God. Let us feel the pierced side of you, Jesus. Let us know that this is real. And God, we ask that that glory that descended from you, God, let it regulate our existence let it change who we are. Let it change our lives. Let it benefit our lives, God. Lord, we thank you that you are going to lift us up from a low position, that you feel every lack that we have. God, we ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Bless this ministry, God. Bless us and we shall be blessed, each and every one of us. We thank you for the anointing on today. We thank you for those nail scarred hands. We thank you for every pain that Jesus fed, felt. It wasn't just for no God, but those nails held on to me. 
If you ask what kept you on the cross, God, it was me. It was that lonely mother who cries at night. It's for that individual who don't know which direction to go in their life. That's what kept you nailed. It wasn't how big the nails were. It was how precious we are. I thank you for that, God. God, you stayed there and you, you, you accepted the whips on your back because somebody was going to be dealing with a sickness. That's what kept you. That's why you endured. God, we thank you that whatever happened at that cross, it was for the victorious living of each and every one of your precious children. God, we ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't the strength of the nail that kept him on the cross. It was the power of his love. It wasn't the rigor uh, or the skill of those Roman soldiers that were able to keep this body of Jesus dying, suffering from shock, hematidrosis. None of that could have kept him there. But you did. You did. Why did it hurt so bad? Because of you. Why did he stay there so long? Because of you. Verse 45, from the sixth to the ninth hour, darkness was over the land because of you and I. It's because of us that he suffered as they led him from Annas to Caiaphas to Pilate. He went through all of that. Mm. A ceremonial high priest in mm. Annas to Caiaphas, the actual high priest, to Pilate. He went through all of this being ridiculed and scorned and questioned and beaten. Why did he do it? Because of you and I. If you don't take this opportunity to reflect on the fact that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement, think about the chastisement, the whipping, the beating, the scourging, that's the chastisement. <clears throat> The father turning his back on the son because he couldn't look at the sin. That's the chastisement. The body filling up in his own fluid. That's the chastisement. Blood pouring from his body. Three, over three quarts of blood poured from his body. Cracked the ground. That's the chastisement. But because of his chastisement, I have access to healing now. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm lost, lonely, lacking, or even am feel like I'm the least, he was wounded for me mm -hmm. because I'm a whosoever. Why don't you come now and accept him, your whosoever's? Let's give God a hand clap of praise once again for the man of God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this powerful, powerful preacher. Thank you, God, for this powerful woman of God who just prayed such a powerful prayer. We're out of here. We're getting out of here. But I just feel that somebody just needs to settle here for a second. Somebody needs to still just settle. Somebody needs to settle. Somebody needs to settle. Bask in his glory. He loved you. He loves you. He loves you. Life is trying to convince you otherwise, but he loves you. Circumstances are trying to convince you to the contrary, but he loves you. 
He loves you. He sent me here on Holy Ghost assignment to tell you, you, can I get closer so you can see me? He loves you. He died for you. He didn't stay dead for you. He got up just because of you. Just because of you. Now you just got to accept him. Accept the light that's in him. Accept him. That's all. That's all. You have faith because he gave you the measure, every one of us, the measure of faith. But as we studied in Sunday school this morning, it's not just the faith. It's not just the prayer. It's not just the symbol. It's not just the symbol, rather, but it's the faith, the applied faith in him that makes all the difference. Hallelujah. 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 How will you apply your faith today? How will you apply your faith in him this moment? Hallelujah. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we magnify your name. We make your name big in this place. This place is only conducive to worshiping you. Nothing else matters but you. We give glory to you and you alone. We render insignificant any attempt of the, of the enemy as feeble and insignificant. Any attempt of the enemy is feeble and insignificant, and it does not even warrant a mention because we are worshiping you. This is a holy place. This is a holy place. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. In your bedroom, this is now holy ground. In your dining room, wherever you're listening to this broadcast, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us today. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. It's in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Let's give God another hand clap of praise for the man of God, for the word of God. We'll ask now Elder Carl Scott to come now and, and dismiss us in his own way. But I want to remind you that we are back in Bible study on this Thursday. Amen. We're starting our new book, The Believer's Mission. The Believer's Mission, we ask that you would come now. This is, a, this is our fourth book in our series on discipleship, the, the Believer's Mission. We want you to come. You are you're, you're, you're just in time because this is week one of this new book, The Believer's Mission. Elder Scott has already given out homework assignments because that's how, he, that, that's how he does. Professor Scott has already assigned homework. But still, I want, you, I want to invite you all to come Thursday night, Thursday night, 7 o'clock on Zoom. We're getting ready to get knee deep and thigh high in The Believer's Mission. Elder Scott, thank you so much for a powerful word. Come, sir, and dismiss us in your own way. Thank you all for the altar prayer and everything, everything that was done today. We thank God for. I want to just read this in your hearing before I close out. This is my way. Jesus was a silent lamb in the midst of a slaughter, being surrounded by wolves in sheep's clothing. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened out his mouth. Jesus could represent the kingdom and his father by speaking to them through silence. Today, you all heard, you heard something today that's changed your life. The prayers that went out today, the word that was spoken over your life. Go walk resurrected. Go walk resuscitated. I don't know what faces you on. I don't care what faces you on this week. It's coming for your breath. It's coming for your resuscitation. Don't follow the weaving of the veil. Be mindful. Be thoughtful. Be watchful. Be vigilant. And pray for others. Father, today we thank you for the word, for the prayers that have gone forth. Lord, we pray now that you continue to bless and watch this ministry, those that are participants, those that have heard, 
will fill up the Bible studies, Lord, the mission, God, that we're about to be on, God, because we're on a life mission now. Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we glorify you. Thank you for those that have heard. Thank you for the changes and the blessings that are coming. In your name we pray today, Father. Amen and amen. You all dismissed. Y'all have a wonderful day. Be blessed and serve the Lord. <laughs>